Hey, welcome to the Inverted Series. This is session three. We're going to be talking about decisions today. And uh, I just wanted to first recap last week because we talked about passions and gifting and our, and our hobbies and how God uh, uses that for the sake of the gospel. And specifically, we looked at Jesus calling his disciples and he used their giftings and their passions for, for calling his disciples. Um, one of my hobbies, one of my passions is board games. A lot of you know this. A lot of you have been roped into playing some of these more complex board games, whether it be Cash of Guns or uh, Settlers or Scythe. Um, but a lot of these games, you may think, well, how thick is that rule book? And, and yeah, I really enjoy complex games. This was the first one. Settlers of Catan was the first one, and I realized that I, I, as I went farther down the rabbit hole of board games, I realized that I liked competitive games. If I'm going up against someone else, I like all the, all the strategy to be reliant on my decisions instead of chance or risk. But if I was working with someone else, if I was working with a group of people, and we were playing against the board game, I enjoyed playing games that you were throwing dice and you were, there was a lot of chance. Um, but overall, um, the, the, what really went down was I love board games that decisions give the outcome of the end. I remember playing Settlers for the first time. It was at a Christmas party, a small group Christmas party, my sophomore year of high school. Um, Mike Welsh brought Settlers and he's like, hey, you guys want to play this? And I'm like, I'll give it a try. I don't know the rules. And it was such a bizarre, like, mind-blowing experience. Um, because up to that point, board games were like Monopoly, like Game of Life, um, you know, categories or eh, some strategy, but not to the level of Settlers. And, and for me to think that you could have the, this interaction between people at the table trading um, and that every decision mattered, I was driving home and thinking through every decision and how I won the game at this small group Christmas party. It was mind blowing to me. We played Settlers of Catan in college so much. It was like a week or a daily, if not three times a day type of, of game for us. Um, it got to the point where there was a four main of us that, that would get together and we would play whenever we could between classes, but we understood the game so much because of so many times that we played it. And we understood how each other acted and we would hold grudges potentially uh, from game to game. But what was crazy is that uh, decisions that we made affected the outcome of the game. And, and we started to learn uh, the strategies and when someone new came in, we understood that they weren't necessarily making the wisest decision, that they would uh, maybe mess up here or there and we would be able to take advantage of that. But overall, like we understood the game frontwards, forwards, backwards, and it was, it was awesome. One of the plays that I would do in college and, and it, gained its notoriety because it caused a whole lot of people to, to flip tables and stuff um, was I would start to trade all my like if I had a lot of one resource I would trade all of it away right um, and I would do stupid trades like two for one I'm giving them two I only get one thing back I didn't care what I was trading for right and, and then I'd play the Monopoly card and, and I would ask for that resource that I just traded away back to myself. And, and I did this, the first time I did this, my friends just looked at me like, are you kidding me? And multiple times I've had people throw tables and it's just, just one of the strategies, one of the plays that we were, would do in college that would just mess people up. And I absolutely love this game so much. All right, guys, so I just want to, I need to get to the video. I need to get this video done. Thanks for playing Settlers with me, but you guys got to go. As much as fun as it was to play 
my favorite game with some of my favorite people. Uh, we got to get into uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and that is Paul. And the fact that the decisions that Paul made uh, from a human perspective, um, people think he just threw his life away. But he had a kingdom perspective. Similar to John the Baptist, where he, we studied the first week, where it said that he would become less so that Christ would become greater, Saul had the same perspective, a kingdom one. And, and that is just incredible. It is um, name changing because his name went from Saul to Paul. He changed his name because of this decision. It was a life changing decision that some people didn't even think was real. And so let's look at, at scripture and in Philippians 3, it says, um, if someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but uh, which comes but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. So what Paul is saying here is he's saying he had it made. Like, do not put any confidence in the flesh because the flesh is garbage, he calls it. He says that he was from the tribe of Benjamin. What he's telling um, the church of Philippi is, hey, this is, I have a resume that, you know, is elite, the top 1% of, uh, he was a well-educated person. He was wealthy. He was in the tribe. He was training. Like, he knew scripture, he, he knew the Torah, he, he knew God, but what was happening is that he missed Christ. And so he may have known everything, known all the right answers and everything, but he considered it loss. He considered it as garbage. Now you think about that and, and, and you know, he had everything at his disposal. He had everything that at any point he could have walked in and, and he probably had the right money. He had um, the ways to pay for things, and but, but he turned that away. He was extremely wealthy and he turned that away to be um, stoned and to um, be shipwrecked, to be eventually killed. Um, so for his faith, and, and that was, is incredible. And yes, if you're looking at it from a worldly perspective, you're seeing this person throw away everything that they spent their life getting. It was, um, and they just throw it away for to be shipwrecked, to be prisoned, to be uh, under house arrest, to be, um, you know, stunned. like this is crazy, right? But in God's perspective and Paul's perspective, this is what God wanted from Paul. This is how the church exploded during that time. He planted so many churches, he trained so many people to lead churches that his ministry has exponentially grown the church um, in those early days of the church. And, and think about it, like it's, it's like you know, someone throwing away their social capital today. Um, you know, we think of, I think of the story of Kanye, right? Kanye just came to Christ and, and from world's perspective, what is Kanye doing? 
He is throwing away his career. He's throwing away um, so much. He is, he's married to a beautiful woman that, you know, is a, is a sex icon. And he's telling her, they're like, hey, chill out. Like, and people are starting to question this. Like, Kanye, what are you doing? And on both sides, we have Christians that are questioning Kanye and going, why would you do this? Like, this can't be re- legit. This is just a publicity stunt. This is just a trick, right? This is just to fool Christians. This is just to, to get the Christian market. And I think those questions we need to ask, but we need to be willing to celebrate with our, what seems to be brother in Christ, Kanye, in the life change that he made. Because we look at how Paul was received, and, and he was received by uh, the church in, with questions. Um, God sent uh, Ananias and he sent um, Barnabas that, that they would go with him and, and be his ally when it came to the other apostles or, or church leaders. Um, because you got to admit, it would be a little sketchy if Paul, who was just persecuting the church, you know, going in, rounding up the church and arresting them or, you know, stoning them that he would then turn and like go to the churches like you got to think that 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 maybe it could be a wolf putting on sheep's clothing right um you got to think if you're protecting your flock you're going to ask the question paul are you legit and like is this really a conversion story and at some point the the apostles through the Holy Spirit and through uh, God equipping him with Paul, with Barnabas and Anani, that they saw Paul and his conversion and they celebrated and they encouraged it and, and they celebrated the churches, right? Um, so it is just incredible transition that Paul made. And I look at Kanye and I see a lot of elements that are the same. Am I calling Paul Con- or Kanye Paul? By no means, right? Like, But I think we do need to celebrate our brothers and our sisters when they when they come to Christ regardless of their background because I am a sinner myself that someone should be questioning my life like hey Ryan you know was your conversion legit and I I go well look at my fruit look at what's happened like there should be some of that question but we shouldn't assume right we shouldn't judge because of that um, there's there's difference between questioning and assuming or judging. It's, yes, ask the question, but then celebrate with our brother and sister, right? We want to hear that story. We want to hear Kanye's story. We want to hear our friends that come to Christ's story. Now, one more example of this is a friend of mine from, from Gunnison, Colorado. Um, he was a uh, owner of a pizza joint. Um, and in town, it's like the only one, right? And Christ grabbed a hold of his life and his wife's life so hard that that his his language changed. That I didn't know him before he knew Christ, but um, from what I understand, is his language was horrible. And um, I know him after, and all I know, it's hard for me to understand that he was that way, because all I hear from his voice now is scripture. Um, that scripture comes out of his mouth uh, whenever he gets the chance. And there's been people that have seen this um, and have seen it in his life. And, and what's crazy is that he was called to sell that pizza joint. And he went down to ministry in uh, Puerto Penasco, Mexico, and uh, has done ministry there, Arizona and stuff. But like, he felt called. He had everything. He was the owner of a, re- a successful restaurant. Um, and, and he was wealthy, he sold everything, said, I'm going to, and, and he went and trained people in Mexico to, to sustainably grow food and stuff. And it's his amazing story, right? And there is countless stories of that. And so I want to challenge you is first to share your story with someone this week. Share how you came to Christ. Because I think that is so crucial in understanding that we are sinners ourselves, right? That we um, have a story. It may not be as radical as uh, Kanye's story or Paul or my buddy Mark from Gunnison. um, But we have a story ourselves. 
So share that story. But also, we need to understand that these decisions that we make today um, affect the outcome, right? That the decision Paul made, the decision Kanye made, decision my buddy Mark made, myself coming to Christ, that those decisions result in, in whether we lose the game or not, right? And it may look like to other people, like let's say we're playing settlers here. Um, it may look like we're completely making, um, you know, a stupid move of sorts, right? Like how is he going to win? Or maybe it even looks like we're playing an entirely different game. That might be the case, but this, that is what Christ wants from us. He wants us to follow him, and that goes counter to a lot of what we hear. And that's why we need to live with that inverted perspective, that kingdom perspective.